And uh, there is a word from the Lord this morning. I would ask you to just please stand once again. I'm just going to read two lines from, well, actually just a few verses from Psalms, Psalms 86 and 12. Just verse 12. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. And then also from Psalm 9, verses 1 and 2, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Amen. That is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. And I'd like to use for our topic this morning, give thanks with all your heart. Give thanks with all your heart. Or give thanks with all my heart. Give thanks with all my heart. Y'all say that with me. Give thanks with all my heart. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal and most wise God, I thank you for this day, a day that we have never seen before, and a day that we will never see again. We ask you right now to do something new with this day with us Oh God, be with us right now. Help me to bring this message to these your people. This message has been rolling around in my spirit for several weeks. Help me now to bring it to them in a way that is practical and easy to understand. Something that we can all apply to our lives when we leave here today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And I know that everybody's excited about Thanksgiving. How many people are going on past from Exodus Homes on Thanksgiving? Raise your hand. How many people are going? Just a couple. So y'all going to be home. Come be with us on Thursday at the Battle of Blessings Luncheon. It's going to be really super fun. It'll be fun all day long. I'm looking forward to being with people that I love, your people that I love, my family, both my churches. And in thinking about Thanksgiving um, and thinking about what I have to be one of the things that I'm most thankful for is that I'm a grandparent. Amen? I've lived long enough to see my children have children, and I see my children passing on to my grandchildren things that I taught them. That is such a blessing. It's wonderful to see that my daughter and her partner, Heather, believe in teaching their little boys, Phoenix and Talent, to be gentlemen. They started from the very beginning. You are going to grow up to be a gentleman. And they teach him, him manners, even though Talon's only six months old, so he's kind of not there yet. But Phoenix is two and a half, and they've been working hard with him on teaching him to be grateful, teaching him to be a little gentleman. And they started with please and thank you. And please and thank you are... Good manners, amen, to say please and to say thank you. And little children, if you teach a child in the way that they should go when they're little, when they'll grow old, they will not depart from it. So we want to start working with kids when they're young. And if your kids are not with you right now, just think about the kids that are all around you, the children that are in this church, the children who need us to be role models and to teach them about please and thank you. And in teaching them, please and thank you, the first thing that they had to do with Phoenix, because he's two and a half, is they had to tell him, do as I do. They would tell him, they would say, now, say please. And he would say, please. And now, say thank you. Thank you. So they'd have to tell him to do it. Do what I'm doing. Copy me. Say please. Say thank you. So he knew, he understood well enough to copy what they were doing. He didn't really totally understand it, but he would do it if they said, do like I do. Then once he got that, they, then they, he kind of knew what was coming. Then they would say, now what do you say? And he'd say, please. And they'd say, when he got what he wanted, what do you say? Thank you. So he could do it if you asked him to do it. What do you say? And they even taught him the sign language for please and thank you, which was so precious. The sign for thank you is like this. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, no. This is please. Please. 
And so they taught him to say please. But since he's little, he couldn't quite get the circle. So he'd go, peace, peace. And I'm telling you something, when a two-year-old runs up, runs up to you and wants a cookie and says, peace, Dad. How can I say no? <laughs> peace. And then the sign for thank you is, thank you. Thank you. And he couldn't quite get all of that, but he would go, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And it was, it's precious. So he understood it. What do you say? Peace. What do you say? Thank you. And I just, I would just bless my heart to see him learning these things so young. And last summer, for his birthday, we all went together and bought him a trampoline. And this is a trampoline for a little kid that's got the mesh all the way around it to where you can't fall out. And you get inside, you can jump and jump and jump and you can fall down. But the mesh will keep you from falling out. So he can get inside and be free. So he, um, they put the tra trampoline together and they sent me a video and they said, here he is playing on his little trampoline. And Phoenix got the trampoline and he was jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping jumping and jumping and he stopped and I saw something come over his face and he turned around and he said thank you mommy without being shown and without being asked jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping thank you mommy I must have watched that video a hundred times played it over and over and over because it just blessed my heart to see what had happened to him. Something had happened to him. He had taken his ability to say thank you to a whole nother level. Something was going on in his heart and I don't think it was about the trampoline either. I think when he was jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping, and jumping all of a sudden he stopped and he realized how much we love him. And how much we want to do good things for him. And he stopped. And from within his heart rose a thanksgiving of praise. Thank you, Mommy. And I love that. And I thought about that and thought about that for a long time. How his ability to say thank you, his thanksgiving, had gone to a whole other level. He had understood, do as I say, do as I do, copy me, do like I'm doing please and thank you. He had understood. Now, what do you do when you ask him? Thank you. But something about it had become real in his heart. It went to a whole other level. It was not even about what he was getting. It was about who we were to him. What we, how much we loved him and how much we wanted to do great things for him. Can I get an amen? amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. His ability to be thankful had gone to a whole another level. He was truly, truly, I believe, grateful for our love and not just because he got a trampoline. And so it is with God and us. Mature Christians, people who've been walking with Christ for a while, people who really know and have a relationship with the true and living God, we know to say please. Amen? God is not our waiter. We can't boss God around and tell God what to do. We're just knowing that God's will is what we should pray for. God's will be done in my life. But God, please, I'm just going to let you know what my desires are and hope that somewhere in your will are my desires. Somewhere that you'll work it out that your will for me also includes the things that I want. Hopefully, if we're praying in God's will, a lot of what we're asking for is in God's will, and that answer is going to be yes. Those prayers are going to be answered. So we know how to say please, most of us, with God. But just like with Phoenix, when we taught him how to say please, and then he would say please, and then when he got what he, he learned that one because what he wanted comes after please. Please get the cookie. Please get to go outside. So please was easier than thank you. Because after he got what he wanted, he forgot all about what to say then. He had to say, now what do you say? And sometimes we're like that. It's easier for us to say please to God and to forget about saying thank you after we get what we want or after those things that we're hoping for happen. And 
Sometimes we're a little bit like Phoenix because in the beginning, in our thanksgiving to God, and you just have to ask yourself, where am I on this continuum of thanks? In the beginning, we might be grateful because and thankful to God because we see other people are. We do like they do. People who testify and they talk about, well, I thank God for, you know, the clothes on my back. I thank God for the food I ate this morning. I thank God for the ride I had today. And you hear them and you're like, well, I should be thankful like they are. I, you know, I, I should be grateful for the food I eat. And I should be grateful for the clothes I'm wearing. And I should be grateful for the car I rode in or the van I rode in to get here today. So we kind of do as they do. You see them be thankful? So we're thankful. Well, that's what I'm supposed to do. Amen? Amen? And then sometimes we're thankful because other people tell us that we ought to be. When we're going through something, man, I got laid off, I lost my job, I can't believe it. Or I got fired. I, I didn't know I'd get fired for being late coming back from lunch two or three times. That's not that big of a deal. Oh, I can't believe I lost my job. And then somebody might say to you, especially if you got laid off, it's okay. You know, be grateful you've got unemployment. Yes, that's true. I can't fall for unemployment. That's right. Don't despair. You lost your job. There's another one out there. Look at the newspaper. How many people are recruiting for jobs today? I guess so. You know, someone's telling me, you know, so now what do you say? Say thank you for unemployment. Say thank you that there are other jobs out there. If you're feeling you know, concerned because you got a bad report from the doctor and I don't know what's going to happen and I'm dreading these tests and, you know, I've been through this before. And you're talking with somebody and they say, but you know what? You need to be grateful that you're still walking around. You still need to be grateful. You're still breathing and you can still, you know, get up and do for yourself. You ought to be grateful that you can go to the doctor that you've got health care, that there's a CFC here in town, there's a CCM where you can get your medication. Well, I guess that's true. I should be thankful. People are like telling us, you know, you ought to be grateful. Just think about what you have to be thankful for. Think about your blessings. And I know I do that. When someone's going through something, I want to help them to see. You, you know, you can't be thankful right now for this and for that and the other. If your car breaks down or it's totaled, Oh, man, I can't. I well, almost had a car accident right in front of the post office the other day. This man just, I mean, grazed me by half of an inch. And I was like, and I didn't cuss. You know what I said? I said, Jesus! <laughs> man, you almost hit my car. And the person who was in the car with me, I'm not going to say who it was, said, well, you know, you can get paid. You almost got paid. Thinking if my car had been wrecked, I would have said, oh, my neck. Oh, I would have gotten paid. And I turned to that person. I said, no, I wouldn't have done that. Not unless I was really hurt. I'm not like that. I'm not hoping somebody's going to hit my car so I can get paid. That's what this person was saying. You ought to be thankful. You could have gotten paid just now. I said, no, nah, that's not who I am. But if he had hit my car, and what I did say, if he hit my car, I probably wouldn't have been hurt. But my car would have probably been totaled because it's an old car and whatever I got for, I probably couldn't hardly get another piece of a car for that. But somebody could say, you know what, even if your car is totaled, you know you work at Exodus Homes, there's lots of other cars and people who can take you places. You know, somebody would have been there to say something. You should be grateful, Miss Susan. You're not going to be without a ride. Even if your car is total, thank goodness that you weren't hurt. We're thankful because someone tells us to be. We're thankful because somebody else will point out to us what we have to be thankful for. You know, and that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. You're right, God, I should be thankful. And so that's kind of like Phoenix. Now, what do you say? Thank you. Well, what do you say? Oh, I should be thankful. That's right, because I have unemployment, because I, I can't go to the doctor, because I can't get a ride even in my car is total. When more door closes, Another one opens. You should be grateful. God's getting ready to open another door. So we, we're thankful for uh, those things when people remind us to be thankful. So we're either, either thankful because we see other people are, and we're like, I should be like that. You know, I should, think, I should be thanking God like they are. Or we're thankful because if somebody else reminds us, you know, you still got stuff to be grateful for. You still have things you can thank God for. That's true. That's true, and both of those kinds of thanks to the Lord, to God, are good. But 
we can take our thanksgiving to another level like Phoenix took his thanksgiving to another level. We can have a spiritual awakening in our thanksgiving. And no, I know I'm talking about a two-year-old, but I would say he had for a two-and-a-half-year-old a spiritual awakening when he realized, wow, they love me. And they do such great things for me. It was about our relationship. He had an aha moment. He had a spiritual awakening in his thanksgiving. And so that is transcendent thanks. That is thanks that goes above and beyond what God is doing for us in our lives. And it's thanks that goes to who God is. Who God is to us in our relationship. That kind of thanks from the heart. It's not about what's happening or not happening. It's not about what God is doing. It's about who God is in our life. And when you thank God for who God is to you, you take it to a whole other level. You're thanking God with your whole heart for God for who you are to me. Just like this. Thank you, Mommy. You love me and you do such great things for me. God, I thank you that you love me and you do such great things for me. You are my God. You are my Savior, my rock. And so I started thinking about that when we give transcendent thanks from our heart for who God is to us, for our relationship with God that comes from our heart. It's not about anything. Thing in particular is just about who God is. And I'm encouraging you to think about this this morning. So who is God? First and foremost, God, the God of the universe, the one who created everything, the one that hung the moon in the sky and flung the stars in the heaven, that God became a personal God. That God clothed himself in humanity and came to reveal himself to us through his son, Jesus Christ, so that now we can relate to that God in a very personal way. And if you're not there yet, just hear what I'm saying and think about it. a very personal relationship with the God of all creation. I have a hard time relating, wrapping my head around the God of quantum mechanics the God of biology, the God of the cosmos, of that God that, wow, of the multiverses. Do y'all know there's more than one universe? That's the truth. There are more than one universes in the creation. There are multiverses. If you ever really look into science, it'll blow your mind. That God, oh wow, I want to connect with that God who's just so awesome and more than my mind can fathom, but a personal that God came through His Son, Jesus, to reveal Himself to us so I can say, I know that God through Jesus. I can connect in my heart, my spirit, because Jesus is real, and Jesus was here, and Jesus is risen, and His Spirit lives in me. He's a personal God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Goes to another level. Oh, you're personal. I know you for myself. And if you don't know that God for yourself yet, today's a good day, my brothers and sisters. It can be very, very personal and intimate with God. And then also, who is God? My very personal Lord and Savior is so near to me at all times. He's with me. Amen? My God is with me. I'm never alone. How good that I'm never alone. His word said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am an ever-present help in a time of need. Oh, if you know that God, that very personal, personal, intimate relationship that's always near. I'm never, never alone. Thank you, God. He's a loving God. This personal relationship that I have with the God of all creation who's always with me is loving. This God looks past my faults 
and sees my needs. Amen? I don't have to feel bad about myself when I'm with my God because my God loves me and sees past my character defects, my flaws, my shortcomings, and loves me for who I am right now, here today. Oh, I'm valuable to my God. You've helped me to know my self-worth is in this relationship. The world might make us feel up one day and down the next, but in my relationship with my loving God, I feel so valuable, so lovable, so important to my God. Thank you, God. Merciful and forgiving. I'm not groveling at the feet of an angry God who's mad at me, begging for God to forgive me. I'm in the presence of the loving, forgiving, merciful God who wants to help me become a better person. Amen? Wants me to learn from my mistakes. Be forgiven because He said, I've already taken care of all of it. Or whatever you might owe me for your sin and the things that you've done, I took that link for you. You're forgiven. Now learn from your mistakes. Go and sin no more. Amen? What a great relationship that you forgive me, that you're merciful. You understand me better than I understand myself. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. This God is my foundation and my rock. My life is not built on sinking sand that's here today, gone tomorrow. I can stand. What does the song say? On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. And so I don't have to worry about the rock I stand on. There's not going to be an earthquake that takes that rock out from underneath me. I'm standing on something stronger than I am. Amen? When I feel weak, I'm standing on something strong. I'm standing on the rock of Jesus Christ. And I can feel strong. I can feel capable with that God underneath me, holding me up, giving me a firm foundation for my footing when I'm trying to go somewhere in my life. Anybody trying to go anywhere in your life? Trying to get somewhere in your life? I'm walking on a rock, not on sand. My feet are secure and steady with God as my foundation. I don't have to worry about the road ahead if the, he, the rock I'm walking on is my relationship with the Lord. Thank you, God. And so just like Phoenix jumping, 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 jumping. Thank you, Mommy. In my life today, oh, if we had time, and if you had time, we could talk about what God has done this, God has done that. God is doing these great things all around. It's like we're jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping and happy about what God is doing. But if we stop and think about who God is, to us. Think about this relationship. Think about the fact that our God is so personal, so very near and intimate, loving, forgiving and merciful, and our the foundation of our life that we will not fall if we stand on that rock. Thank you, God. I thank you with all my heart. It's transcendent is spiritual. And when you thank God like that, my brothers and sisters, it'll take you to another level. And to take you deeper in the spirit, it'll give you a revelation about who God is and who you are in God's sight. And so that is the word of God for the people of God. And if you heard that word, and if you're feeling it like I feel it, maybe you want to sing this little song with me. From the heart, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. You've been
Let us stand. That is a message for God's people.